Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Ready for the event. KMGH, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. We have a big win. Station, this is Wanya Reese with KMGH. How do you hear me? Loud and clear with some background noise, but other than that, great. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a meeting happening now. All right, perfect. So um, I just want to jump right on into things. Um, tell me about your uh, your connection to Colorado. Well, I grew up there. I, I was actually born in, in Wheat Ridge and uh, was there until I was 18 before I went off to college and uh, enjoyed living in Denver and exploring the Rockies. That's great. And um, another question that I just have to ask you, how is it like being in space? How, how much time do we have? Uh, being in space is incredible, obviously. I mean, from the little things that, you know, you wake up in your crew quarters and you get to float to work every morning uh, to looking outside and, and seeing the beautiful Earth, seeing the aurora, seeing lightning storms, uh, and then working with folks from around the world to, to do the research we do here on station. So it's that's a long conversation, but it's really incredible being up here. I know that we could definitely talk about it for days, but I just want you to speak with me about when did you know hey, I want to be an astronaut. When did that become a thing? I don't, I don't think there was ever really a single point, a single inflection point that said, that's what I want to do. Uh, I wanted to be so many things. At some point, I wanted to be a surgeon. I wanted to be an architect. I wanted to be an engineer. And I overall, and I learned that I just, I wanted to explore and work with smart people and do cool things and, and go faster or fly airplanes with the Navy. So, this this is something like oh I could well, I think it, maybe I should apply for that let's go do that that seemed pretty awesome because it it met a lot of the things I really loved to do, and so I don't think there was any single inflection point but you know it was always moving towards it through my life. And Ahmed, if you just don't mind sharing with me, what does a typical day for you look like? You know, you can't wake up when the sun rises because it's always dark. So what does a day look like for you? What is it starting? What is it ending? The best part about uh, when you ask the typical day question is there is not a typical day. It's always something new. It's always something new popping up, a new problem to solve, somebody new to work with uh, on the ground, a new researcher, uh, a new problem that we got to tr tr ta tackle or troubleshoot. Um, so it's always it's something new every day. But we have a group of folks on the ground that put together our schedule. We wake up, we eat breakfast, uh, we look at the plan ahead for the day, and we say, okay, we, we I got to go knock this activity out and do this maintenance thing or go work with a researcher to conduct a scientific experiment or you know take pictures of the earth to, to support uh, activities or things going on on the ground uh, we're, we're gearing up to start taking some specialized pictures of thunderstorms uh, and trying to capture some of the activity with the upper atmosphere so there's always something new up here and um you said breakfast so what does a typical breakfast look like up there typical breakfast. Well, we have a box with generic breakfast foods in it. Uh, they're all, most of which are dehydrated, so they come in little plastic packets, and we hook them up to a wall on the machine, and we inject a, a metered amount of either hot or cold water, say, you know, I think scrambled eggs take 75 milliliters of hot water, and then you take two to five minutes to let them rehydrate, shake them around a little bit, cut open the plastic packet with a with a scissors, and uh, have, your, have your scrambled eggs. Some of them are seasoned, maybe add some hot sauce to it. Um, granola cereal. We have all of those things set up and ready for go for us. It's actually super nice. You don't have to go to the grocery store. You just float in down there, uh, grab your food, rehydrate it, eat it. Uh, you know, sometimes you can wake up maybe five minutes before work officially starts and brush your teeth, put your clothes on, and, and eat breakfast when you're ready to go. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, and um, if you don't mind sharing with me, so when did you get to space and when are you going to be coming back home to the U.S.? Absolutely. So we, uh, we do six-month rotations up here in crews. Uh, our crew of four came up on the Dragon Crew 8 in early March, and we'll be here for six months, so through August. Uh, and then we'll, you know, Crew 9 will launch a couple weeks before we go home, and we'll do a turnover and show them where stuff is and how stuff works. 
that uh, we've learned in our six months up here, do a quick turnover, and then we'll go home, and then Crew 9 will run uh, for six months, plus uh, another crew member from who launched on the Soyuz to work, uh, three people will launch on the Soyuz in the same sort of turnover, turnover cycle. Okay, I got you. And, you know, for any kids who might be, you know, watching this story and they may one day dream or aspire to be an astronaut, what would you tell them? Because it seems like something that can be a little daunting. Uh, it can be a little daunting until you start hanging out with us and realize uh, we're, we're just as silly and like to have do some of the same things that everybody else does. Uh, and so I think the best thing to do is just go do the things you love, do the things you enjoy, uh, because then you'll be good at them because you'll want to do them every day and it won't feel like work. And this, the jobs that we're doing here on the space station, the jobs that we're going to go do on the moon, uh, on the surface, or in orbiting the moon, take all kinds of people from all different backgrounds. And why not just go do what you love and then come join us? Very, very well said. And, you know, since you're in the space station, have you ever seen, you know, the state of Colorado? And if so, do you see any of the mountains or any of the 14ers or anything like that? I, I have. We've done a couple passes over Colorado, and, and you have to make sure things are just aligned. So we have to be over Colorado. We need to be awake. Uh, we need to be in sunrise, or we, the sun needs to be up. But we've had a couple passes over Colorado. I'm still waiting for the perfectly clear day, but I've definitely seen the beautiful uh, Colorado Front Range and seen Fort Collins and Denver and Boulder uh, as we come screaming by at 17,500 miles an hour. We've had cameras out a few times, but still waiting for a really good clear day to get some great shots of the Denver Front Range. That sounds good. And I know that, you know, you're a flight engineer. So what exactly is the um, the job look like for you? I know you said like it's different every day, but what are like your core responsibilities, you would say? Uh, so we're, we're kind of everything up here, right? So primary, you know, initial responsibility was, you know, getting the crew up here safely on the Crew Dragon and managing a, a rocket ship and keeping folks safe and, and working with Mission Control SpaceX and Mission Control Houston to get that done. Uh, so getting up here and getting back is a primary responsibility. Uh, I'm also a mechanic and a plumber, right? So this stuff up here breaks. You can't call the plumber. You can't call a mechanic. You can't call somebody to, you know, fix your house. Uh, so the other day I was literally trying to uh, cover up paint that was peeling off, something as simple as that, to fixing the toilet. Um, and then another primary job is running experiments. So we have researchers from around the world that prepare experiments for years. Uh, they launch them to the space station, and then we get to operate them and we work with them. So they're in our ears with the radio, and we're, they're talking us through how to run their experiment. In fact, uh, Dr. Barrett earlier today was working on the Cold Atom Lab, which is a research experiment that uh, takes you know, some atoms down to billionths of a degree uh, for some physics experiments that you can only do up here in microgravity. Uh, so we're running those experiments and, uh, and then we're, another major job is communicating with folks around the world about the importance of human spaceflight. And that's a perfect segue to my next question, because I know we still have a little bit more time. You know, why do you feel personally that space exploration is important? Uh, space exploration is, I mean, that's another long conversation of why it's important, but it's about moving humanity forward. It's about understanding the, the solar system around us. Things we do in space can benefit uh, humankind around the world with some of the technologies we push and develop. Uh, additionally, super important for, you know, humans, like once you sit up here and you look at the Earth and you see how thin the atmosphere is, you realize just how fragile Earth is. And each bit of knowledge that we get can move us forwards to the moon and then ultimately becoming a multi-planetary species on Mars so that our species isn't just stuck on a single planet at risk from a single asteroid strike. So you could go on and on for the days of the importance of, of human spaceflight, but it's a small fraction of what we spend as a government and it just moves humanity so much further forward. I, I definitely understand. Is there anything that has surprised you just about your journey there or, or just being in space that you can speak about or speak to? Uh, I, you know, I guess there's like basic things and then there's, you know, big things. I think the basic things are, you know, just adapting to this environment. Very simple things can, can become very complex uh, or onerous. You know, as you see here, I'm, I'm demonstrating zero G, but, you know, if I leave, if I leave a pen or a pencil out, you know, it just starts to slowly float away in the air currents and it's very easy to lose things. And they talked about that in training and you said, yep, yep, copy, I'll go find it. 
but in reality things just float away and you can you could have to stop what you're doing and spend 20 minutes to go find something so some of the basic tasks can be uh difficult uh but then also the things that really blew me away is is one night we were in the cupola which is a, a series of seven windows that look outside and we were uh down in the southern hemisphere and we saw the aurora and I'd, i've seen aurora from the earth before but we were we were in it. It was like we were going through green clouds of aurora that was just incredible to see. So, you know, basic things, admin on the space station are interesting, but then also being able to look outside the window and see that sight for yourself. I've spent so much time with cameras. I've probably taken over, I'm guessing, over 100,000 images at this point, but I don't think a single one of them captures what you can see with the ability of the human eye. Yeah, I can only imagine, you know, how beautiful it is to see everything up there. Uh, my next question for you is, once this mission is over, what's next for you? Do you just stay in the U.S. or, you know, do you want to go back to space? What does that process look like? Uh, we go, I go right back uh, into operations in the astronaut corps on Earth. I think some of our jobs on Earth are far more important than some of the jobs uh, we do uh, in space. Um, for that matter, you know, developing the next spacecraft is something I'm super interested in and what we're going to do to go to the moon, uh, work on systems, take the knowledge we've gained up here and inform the development of the next spacecraft, the next habitable environment, uh, talk to folks around the Earth about the importance of spaceflight. There's so many f really important jobs to do on the Earth that I think you could argue they're, they're more important than some of the stuff we do here on, on orbit. Um, go back and work in mission control. Absolutely loved working with those folks on some other space vehicles. So, I mean, there's so many important ground jobs going right back into the ground running. Yeah, that's a really, really um, interesting perspective. I like that there. So I have to ask you, so I'm assuming you no longer call Colorado home. Is Texas home? Is Florida home? Where's home now? Where is home? Oh man, I'm sure, I'm sure there's so many cliche phrases you could say right now. I'm thinking of a few that are like painted on tchotchkes on walls in people's houses, but I won't repeat them. Uh, where is home? Uh, I mean, home is, is where you're at a lot. You know, I, my heart is definitely with my family right now, even though they're not here, uh, and friends and family that are on earth that I miss. Um, you know, we live in Texas now, that's home. Uh, I've been in the military for almost 20 years now moving, and so the concept of home to me is, is very dynamic. And uh, I definitely grew up in Colorado, love that place. Uh, but I, I guess the simple answer to the home is Earth right now. <laughs> yeah, when I asked you that question, I was like, oh, you know, I'm not sure, you know, how he may answer it. You spoke about your family. Um, do you have any kids or anything like that? Uh, yep, I've got, uh, I've got two, two daughters right now at home, uh, both in elementary school, and uh, enjoy video chatting with them. Uh, from space. They always have funny questions. What do they think about dad being an astronaut? What's their like reaction to that? I feel like it's something they probably still don't, you know, fully let it soak in for lack of better words. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think it, you know, for the, when they were, you know, a couple years ago, five, six years ago, four years ago for that matter, I don't think it really sunk in. I think it's now kind of to sink in. It was just this thing. I was this job I would go to at work, and I'd travel a bit. But now that I'm actually in space, I think it's starting to hit them a lot differently. It's actually real as opposed to just this cartoonish thing that Dad says he does. Uh, definitely. And um, just my last question, is there anything that you would like to add, any message that you'd like to send to the folks here in Denver, Colorado? Oh man, the uh, the Colorado Rockies are beautiful. The Earth and our nature and our environment is so fragile. Uh, take care of what we got there and just absolutely love that natural environment we have in Denver. Keep it beautiful. All right, thank you so much for your time this morning. I appreciate you. That'll conclude the interview. Awesome, great to work with you and talk to you today. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Station captain.